Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Kyle with FlySkins.com. Alright, today I'm just going to show you how to use a new product that I just came up with. It's called Kylie's Fish Fins. It's right here. It gives uh, you the ability to make a more realistic fin, so to speak, on any type of bait fish pattern. Uh, this is kind of a maybe toned down version of an actual sculpin fin or what it looks like, but it works great for sculpin patterns. A lot of trout fishermen use um, sculpin patterns to catch big trout and uh, this is basically an easy way to do it versus using feathers. Um, and the cool thing about this particular product is when you tie it down it likes to stick out so it adds a lot of action to it when you strip it in. The, the pectoral fins actually move back and forth as well as the, the, the tail kind of kicks around and it's got excellent movement in the water. Uh, it's something I'm really excited about. and. Uh, so let me go ahead and get started. First I'm tying on my peak vise here, rotary vise, the PRV1 I believe. And um, I'm going to do this one fairly large pattern. It's not huge, maybe to some people it will be, uh, but it's actually not. I, I throw this on a 6 or a 7 weight and it does just fine. And, and there is actually a lot of weight to it and you'll see, but, uh, but I like to get sculpins down, especially if that's the kind of pattern I'm looking for. Uh, mainly because if you know anything about a sculpin, it's going to sink, to, it's going to go to the bottom and it's going to kind of rise back up and then go back down. So I'm actually going to use two size two U301 streamer hooks made by Umqua here. It's got a down eye. Uh, a lot of people do a smaller uh, hook in the back and then a larger one up front. I actually like to use two of these and the reason why is because the sculpin pattern that I'm trying to achieve uh, matches more realistic as far as I'm concerned. They, they've got long bodies and they get really thin in the back and uh, that's what I'm trying to go for. So here what I gotta do first is I've got to tie the back of the fly. I can go ahead and put this in my vise, this hook. It's a size 2, 2x streamer hook like I said. I think the the biggest thing to remember typically is if you are gonna do a tandem style hook or two hooks on a fly you want to make sure you're not violating any laws wherever you're going to fish it as well uh, as the, kind of the balance ratio of the fly. You want to make sure that when you do it, um, you, you at least use the same size or smaller in the back and it'll help achieve greater balance, casting, all kinds of stuff. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use, I've got some Vivas brown 8-aught thread. Hairline carries this and it's really strong, even the 8 eye. A lot of people, you can tie small flies, big flies, whatever you want with this, and it works great. Um, I like to add a little bit of a base layer before I put my tail in. And the reason why is because um, the, the hook shank itself is a little tiny, so it doesn't matter what kind of dubbing you use right here. I'm literally just trying to create a little fatter base for the fin to sit on. And it'll also just uh, kind of add a little more body to the fly. So, like I said, any type of matching color dubbing that you're trying to achieve here. I'm going to use the brown fish fins. I'm just going to go up just a little bit. You don't have to get crazy with it. Creating a base here. And you take the fish fin itself. It's, you know, pectoral fin, tail fin. Real simple, right? I'm going to take it and I'm just going to cut it right here. Okay, so now I've got this long tab here. You can tie it on either side you want. Remember when you're wrapping, the stuff likes to, to roll around the actual hook shank, so sometimes it helps to start a little low and go up. And that's literally all you have to do. Okay, so now it's on there, it's on the one side. It's going to be a little floppy, but the thing is, as you build up material along this part of it, it's actually going to kind of help hold that fin a little bit further back, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, the more that fin moves around, the more action the fly is going to get, and, and you'll see how it reacts in the water. Uh, I've got several videos uh, already posted, and you, I'll, I'll, put it, I'll connect it to this video so you can see um, how it's actually going to react. Now what I want to do is I want to create a nice... Uh, nice body. I'm going to use a lot of synthetic material because I'm trying to keep certain weights down and certain weights up. And what I mean by that is 
I don't want all my material to collect a whole lot of water uh, that is on the fly because that makes it super heavy and it's not as consistent as it could be as far as cast after cast consistent weight. Uh, so most of my weight I'm trying to concentrate on is the eye up front and then the beads in between the two hooks. Okay. So what I'm going to use is this is a brown color Sculpin. As you know Sculpins have a lot of different colors. They're usually spotted or you know they've got some cool camouflage looking kind of stuff going on. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a lot of different colors going on here. Uh, I'm going to take some uh, olive colored hackle. I'm going to go to the back of the saddle here and I'm going to look for the thickest feather that I can. Now you can use schloppen as well. Uh, that's a good feather to actually use on this pattern. But I have this as well. It's like orange um, grizzly hackle here. There's some really good thick feathers in the back and I'm going to mix these two together essentially and you'll see here in a second. I want to take these feathers and I want to brush out the fibers. Okay, And I want to do the same on the other one, on the olive one. And then I want to match those lengths together. So if it's wider or whatever since this olive one's longer, I'm going to kind of find where they're about the same. Okay, And then I can remove the tip. And I'm going to tie it in from the skinny end and then work it towards the front. So just pull those fibers back, lay this on here, and tie those in. The next thing I want to achieve is I'm going to do a dubbing loop. And advance my thread forward. I'm going to take my dubbing spinner here, or dubbing loop spinner here, hang it on there. I'm going to use some Senyo's Fusion Dub here, and I'm going to use the crusty nail color. That's the fly that you'll see in the picture, or you have seen in the beginning. And I'm going to take this. It's going to use a pretty healthy proportion. This is synthetic material, so it doesn't absorb a lot of water, but it will create good body to the fly. So I've got about four inches here for my dubbing loop. Spin my tool around. And what's going to happen is it's going to kind of want to wad up a little bit. All you got to do is take a strip of Velcro or a, a brush, dubbing brush. You can kind of get those fibers out. And then I'm going to do a little trick I learned from the guys at Fly Fish Food. I'm going to do a, a complex twist. I'm going to take the feathers and the dubbing loop and I'm going to hold them together and I'm going to take a, it's kind of like a multimeter tool fly tool deal here clip all those together I'm going to go ahead and trim off where my uh, dubbing tool was holding there and now I'm just I'm holding it with this clip I'm just going to basically rotate this and it's going to make this cool kind of like hackle it's going to spin the feather in with the dubbing and it's going to want to kind of grab those fibers of the dubbing and kind of mat it down. So all you got to do is take your Velcro brush again, you kind of press it in, wiggle it around, pull it out. It's going to pull those fibers back out. Now you got this really neat uh, looking piece of chenille essentially. I'm going to take it and I'm going to palmer it and brush those fibers back with my other hand all the way down. Almost all, what I want to do is get almost the whole way down except for a little bit of, so I can uh, tie off some marabou here in the front. So you gotta leave a little bit and those were literally just long enough to make that happen. Sorry I went a lot of focus here. It's all that palmering. Okay tie this off give it a second here, there we go alright so what you see there is some pretty cool stuff going on and then I'm gonna go ahead and secure that a little bit more hang on, there we go, okay I'm going to take my Velcro brush again. I want to pluck out as many fibers that got matted down as possible. You can kind of brush it out. And it is going to look beautiful here. 
All right, lots of body going on. And then, like I said, you got a little space up front. I'm going to tie in some brown or rusty colored marabou just to match uh, the rest of the fly there. You can just tie it in a um, little bit up top, a little bit on the bottom, whatever you want to do. I'm just trying to create a little more um, action of the fly by doing this. I'm going to take it. I'm going to strip off a good cluster there. I'm just going to take it and I'm going to lay it over the top. I don't want to go over my tail here. I want to keep that because what's going to happen is, you, as you guys probably already know, that marabou is going to uh, add a lot of movement to a fly that's already got a lot of movement. And I think that is something that's really good to achieve when you're tying streamer patterns. All right, so now I got a nice clean head here. Um, you can also put a little bit on the bottom. I'll do that now too. Take a, about the same amount. I'm gonna tie it on the bottom right here. All right. So what you can do, you can add a little super glue, some of the UV uh, loon stuff. That's what I usually use. It's quick, easy, eco-friendly, all that good stuff. All right. Whip finish. I'm gonna take uh, some of the U the flow here. Push this back so I don't get any on my marabou on there. Cure that all the way around okay so there you have it that's the back section of the fly now I want to do the front section so I'm going to take this out one good thing to have in your tying area is a rubber band when you're tying articulated flies so let me show you what that's for here in a second but it's going to help hold that other hook out of the way while you're tying this fly so I'm going to take my second streamer hook here same size size 2 u301 2x down eye umqua hook okay put this bad boy in there and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these new lead eyes by hairline love these things they're pretty sick it's a, a double pupil eye the one I'm gonna use if I can find it on my bench here is actually a uh, orange I just got it there it is it rolled away all right okay so it's orange and it's got a little black pupil there this is the largest version they have uh, what I've got to do though before I put that down is I want to add a little bit of a thread base here now I'm going to use wool a wool blend um, sculpting head on this so I want to leave a little bit of space up front in order to put that wool on the back side and front side of this particular fly. So figure eight this thing, get it nice and tight. And I'm gonna turn this guy upside down now. And the reason why is um, I want this hook or this fly to actually hook, or I'm sorry, float or act with the hooks facing down. There's a lot more meat on the bottom of the fish's mouth. So your hookups are a little bit better and a little bit better for the fish as well. Alright, so that's in place. Now one thing I do like to do, especially with dumbbell eyes, is always put a little bit of super glue on there and that's good because that'll soak in. I can use a toothpick to help spread that around get in those little nooks and crannies and uh, it'll just make it a little bit stronger and that thing's gonna dry while I'm working the rest of this advance my thread to the back you don't have to lay a complete thread base for this to work what I'm about to show you come back up to the front and then I'm gonna take some I, I like to use this stuff. It's just trialene, 40 pound braid. You can use uh, wire as well. I, I really like using this stuff. Um, now, there, there's a lot of people that like to run this through the eyelet. Um, I haven't found it really necessary for trout 
I, I just haven't hooked up on one big enough to actually pull it out. So I don't really, it, it doesn't, I don't feel any safer doing that. Now if I tie a saltwater uh, articulating fly, that's going to be different. So I'm going to tie this down right here. I'm going to come back up. And I'm going to just take this leftover tag here. I'm going to tie it in around that eyelet. And back down. And it's going to hold just fine. After you get all the material down, you've got all these wraps on here. That thing's not going to go anywhere. I like to go just over the bend of the hook there as far as I can. You can come back and forth a few times. going to add a little security there. Alright, so then I'm going to add two copper beads. Uh, I think these are... Uh, they're just brass, but they're copper coated. They're for a size 6 to 8 hook. Uh, adds a little weight to the fly. Some people use plastic. I think it just depends on what you want to do with the fly, really. This is just what I use. Slide these down on your line. And then I'm going to run the tail that I made. I'm going to run this through. Make sure you got enough uh, line here to make this work, too, because you got to run it back through those beads. Okay. So I'm going to come back through those beads. And then I'm going to cinch this right up to as tight as I can go to the hook, but not over. You got to leave a little bit of space. And the reason why is because you want to make sure that your fly is actually going to move back and forth. Otherwise, what would be the point of tying it this way, right? So I want it almost butted up right against that. I'm going to trim some of this excess off to get it out of the way. All right. Tie this and then get it down to where there's just a li little bit of play in the back. Come back up and take my excess tag here, tie it around the uh, eyelid again. A little extra reinforcement. Turn this excess off. Okay, so there you have that part. What I want to do now is I want to take some more marabou, and the reason why is I want to kind of hide this connection here. So I want to use a little bit of uh, longer strips if, if you have them. So this plume right here is pretty long, so it's going to work out pretty well. I'm going to just strip this off like that. I'm going to lay it over, and I just want it long enough to kind of start blending in with the other marabou. And you can, uh, if you go too skimpy on this section, it can kind of look funky in the water, because once it gets wet, it goes down to hardly anything. So... Don't be scared to use a little extra marabou. I'll probably use this whole plume here. And I'm going to kind of work my way around and tie it in place. Same length all the way around. Oh, and I forgot to show you all the trick. The trick with the rubber band. Okay, so I'm going to take my tail, since it's flopping around here, it's kind of in the way. I'm going to put it on my hook here. I'm going to wrap it around my vise, pull it out of the way, so you don't hook yourself. That's a pretty common thing, guys. You probably already know this, tying articulated patterns. Take the rest of my marabou off this plume here, and I'm going to tie it in on the other side. So I've got three sides essentially here that I've tied this in. You can add some more to the bottom if you'd like. But I'm about to do the same thing to the back that I did with the front as far as uh, the body. I'm going to repeat those steps essentially. So I've got a lot of... move this here. Got a lot of stuff going on so far. A lot of plumage. It's going to blend in with the back. Okay. Keeps going out of focus here. Alright. Okay. 
So once again, I'm going to find two good feathers off my hackle here. Let's see. Nice big ones. Let me use that grizzly orange again. And then find a nice big fat one on the back of the saddle of the olive. Like I said, schlopping works really well for this as well. Brush those fibers down out of the way. Match them up. And then tie it in tips, just the tips. Cut those tag ends off. And then I'm going to do my dubbing loop again. And I'm going to advance this to about the same distance that I leave in the front, I want to leave in the back. Because I'm going to, I need to save some room for my upcoming, uh, the head of the fish there and the pectoral fins. So I'm going to take some more of that Senyo's Fusion Dub, the crusty nail color. I'm going to use a little bit less this time. I don't need to go as far. So maybe three inches instead of four inches of a dubbing loop. And you can stop this thing wherever you want though. You can tie it off. If you get a little carried away, spin this thing. It's wanting to suck in my marabou there. I'm going to kind of work this fiber out. And then I'm going to take my two pieces of hackle, the grizzly and the olive. And then I'm going to take my other tool here, pinch them together. I'm going to cut this thread or pull it off my dubbing tool and then do the complex twist again. I'm going to make that, it's like big chenille essentially. Give that cool variegated kind of look to it. It's got all kinds of colors going on. That's exactly what I want. Go back in, brush out any trapped fibers, and then palmer it around. Make sure as you palmer it, you're really uh, pulling those fibers out of the way as you wrap it because you want to make sure it's got a nice full body and then uh, that way you can get a little better look to it. All right, so that's where I want to stop. Sorry, it keeps going out of focus here. Tie this off. Trim my excess. All right, so there it is so far. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to add my pectoral fins. Now, um, these the, the fish fins. One thing I forgot to talk about here, I think, is um, they come in three different sizes. I'm using the medium size right now, um, and uh, you can use whatever size you want. If you ever look at a sculpin, you'll notice that the the pectoral fins are pretty big so you can use an oversized one and it's probably going to work just fine so this is kind of what I've got going on so far looks like a hot mess right um, I'm going to take what's left of my fins here I'm going to cut it directly in half and that's going to allow me to have two separate pieces you can put them up down whatever way you want uh, one thing that's cool about these, as soon as you tie them in, what it's going to want to do, since it's rubber, it's going to basically fold out. It's going to want to spring load itself, which is very cool in the water. And I'm going to wrap it just back here. And you're going to see how they stick out right there. And the material on the back kind of helps with that as well. You can kind of position it around, tie it exactly how you want it in. I'm going to put the other side on. There is kind of an up and down, but like I said, you can do whatever you want. That's why we tie flies, isn't it? Alright, so now that we have the pectoral fins on, next thing I want to do is I want to add a little bit of red dubbing 
right behind where I'm going to put the head of the fly. The uh, reason why is I want to add that for uh, kind of the gills where they're going to be. So I'm going to take this really shiny dubbing here and tie it. This stuff's long. So, and then I'm going to do it on both sides. And this is going to act as the gills, so to speak, as a little extra color. It's pretty neat. Tie it in lengthwise like I'm stacking it in place. Like that. It's a little big, but that's okay for now. I'm going to fold this side back, tie it back. Same with the other side. And then what I'm going to do is I want to trim it nice and neat um, up against that fin there. About like that right there. Okay. Same with the other side. I'm going to trim it. I just want a little bit of flash of red there. Okay, so you got it on both sides. Alright. Next thing I want to do is I'm going to start adding the wool head. Now what I've done is I've used Hairline Dubbin's new dubbing mixer and I've taken some uh, of the same crusty nail color and I mix it with some brown wool and I've got this flashy kind of wool to work with. When you're doing this, uh, it's like stacking in deer hair essentially but a little bit easier. Okay, so I'm going to take a cluster of the wool here and I'll pull the fibers out lengthwise. I'm going to create a nice little stack of long fibers. Okay, I'm going to take it and I'm going to basically wrap right in between. I'm right behind the eyelet right there. I'm going to do the same thing for the underside. I want to make sure my fibers are long. Tip it upside down here. Same thing. Right in the center. I'm going to take my thread and I want to go in between those stacks here. I'm going to fold it back and I'm going to wrap a couple wraps behind the eye. Advance my thread to the front. I'm going to do it again in the front of the eye and repeat those same steps. Okay, now I got this big mess here. I kind of fold it out of the way. I'm going to advance my thread. I want to get it right in front of that stack, pull these back, and build up a nice little thread base in front of these. That's going to help push some of those back. And then I'm going to whip finish. Okay. And we're done. Just kidding. All right. So now we have this big hairball in the front. And I want to trim it to make it a little more, you know, presentable. And what you can do to finish this fly off, put a little super glue on there, help keep it nice and secure for a long time. And basically we've created a nice durable sculpin fin. It's got a realistic profile with these fish fins. And uh, if you want to add a little pizzazz to it, basically all you, you take your sharpie markers and you add little dots on the fins and the tail. Which is pretty much what I've done with the, the picture of the fish you guys see in the video as well. So, And that is it folks.